Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, we are going to discuss about southern blotting. In previous videos, I have explained you about western blotting. So the link will be given in the description box and northern blotting will also be explained in the further videos. So coming to the southern blotting. Southern blot is a technique which is used in molecular biology for detection of a specific sequence in a DNA sample. So we know that DNA consists of a sequences, right? So in those sequences, if you want to know about particular specific sequence, by using this method, we can I will get identify that specific sequence and the technique is called as southern blotting right so how you can find the specific sequence by using the southern blotting technique let us see enough so let us see the procedure of this southern blotting technique so firstly what you are going to do you are going to extract the DNA sample right so how we are going to extract the DNA sample it depends upon your interest for example here I'm going to take four bacterium so here there are four bacteria but all of these bacteria belong to same species but their genomic uh, you know the genetic information which is present in it is totally different for example if you take the species of human beings which is called as homo sapiens the, we all of we all of us belong to the same species called as homo sapiens but the genetic information which is present in one human being is different when compared to that of another human being right in the same way you are going to take the here bacteria with same species but their uh, you know genetic information or the what we say this genetic orientation is different when compared to all of these bacteria right so now let us see here so if you see the structure of the bacteria it consists of chromosomal dna as well as the plasmid but in the southern blotting technique with there will be no use of this chromosomal dna where there will be only use of this plasmid such that the plasmid from this bacterium will get extracted by using a micro injection or else you know micro uh, there are many tools like uh, you know micro syringes they will extract this plasmid from this bacterium out and now this is a plasmid which consists of the dna um, you know it is a dna material which consists of the dna sequences inside it so now let us see this is a sequence which is present in the plasmid DNA right let us assume this is a DNA sequence which is present in this plasmid DNA and now what you are going to do is that you are going to add the restriction enzyme to this plasmid and once the restriction enzyme is added it will search for a restriction site on this DNA sequence and once it searches for the restriction site then the restriction enzyme will get binded over to the restriction site this restriction enzyme will get binded to the restriction site and it cleaves the DNA so if you see this is a DNA strand and in this way the restriction enzyme will cleave and once the restriction enzyme will cleave this strand then the both the strands will get separated. And here not only the one restriction site is present, there are two to three or else four restriction sites are present such that the four restriction enzymes will get binded to the restriction sites and cleaves the DNA. So these are the strands which will get separated by the cleaving uh, of this restriction site. It is, it is called as a molecular scissors actually. So what is the best example of the restriction enzyme? Eco R1. There are many other uh, you know, uh, restriction enzymes and the video has been already uploaded about this restriction enzymes. The total mechanism has been already explained and the link will be given in the description box. So here the total strands has been separated. So the strands which has been separated belongs to the belongs to the bacteria A. Bacterium A. In the same way we are going to do the for the bacterium B and even you are going to do the same procedure for C and D also. So the strands will be obtained from A, B, C and D bacteria, right? And now what you are going to do is that you are going to do the process of gel electrophoresis. So I think you might have a basic knowledge about this gel electrophoresis. And if you don't have any knowledge, then you can listen here. I'm going to explain you. So the gel electrophoresis process will be done by taking an agarose gel. And this is agarose gel where you are going to prepare four wells on it. A well, B well, C and D wells right you are going to punch four wells on this agarose gel plate and now what you are going to do you are going to obtain strands right so from the bacteria a you are going to obtain the strands from the bacteria b you are going to obtain the strands and from the c and you also are going to obtain the strands so the strands which has been obtained from the a bacteria will be introduced into the first well or else in the a well and in the same way the strands which has been obtained from the b bacteria will be placed in this b well and the bacteria which and the strands which has been obtained from the C bacteria will be placed in the C well in the same way you are going to place the D bacterial strands also in this D well. And now what you are going to do is that after placing those uh, molecules of, of, of the strands you are going to place all of the strands or as the molecules in this uh, wells right. And now what you are going to do is that you are going to apply the voltage current right and you are going to apply the electricity. Once you apply the electricity, actually here this is a positive electrode and this is a negative electrode. So once the electricity is applied, 
to this agar gel then what happens is that the migration of the strands occurs from the positive electrode to the negative electrode where it moves towards the downward direction as the arrow mark indicates right so here uh, we have placed all of the strands in the wells right so once the electricity is supplied then the strands which are present in this positive electrode will start migrating towards the negative electrode based on their size right and if the and if if you see here this is a strand which is present near the negative direction which indicates that this molecular size is very much less i mean it consists of only less number of nucleotide base pairs when compared to the all of these three strands right so if the size of the strand is less then it can move faster towards the negative electrode and if the size is more or else high then it cannot move towards the negative electrode where it will get stuck near the positive electrode itself right so the same process occurs in all of these three wells right and now next what you are going to do is that see you are going to remove this agarose gel which consists of all of the strands which has been separated and now what you are going to do is that you are going to take a trough right you are going to take a trough and in the trough you are going to place a sponge and on this sponge you are going to place this agarose gel which consists of the strands separated strands remember you are going to remove this agarose gel and you are going to place that on a sponge as the diagram is represented here clearly you can understand so you are going to place a sponge on this trough and on this sponge you are going to place the agarose gel which consists of the separated strands on this agarose gel you are going to place a nitrocellulose paper this green color one indicates the nitrocellulose paper you are going to place nitrocellulose paper on this above agarose gel which consists of the dna strands which are separated and now on this nitrocellulose paper you are going to place the paper towels so once you place this paper towels then the pressure i mean uh, you know there is some of the weight high weight which is present in this paper towels which indicates the pressure will move towards it downward right once the pressure is moved towards it downwards then what happens then the agarose gel consists of this dna strands which are separated that will move towards the nitrocellulose paper right it moves towards the nitrocellulose paper due because of the pressure which you are going to apply from the paper towels the agarose gel consists of the dna strands which moves towards the nitrocellulose paper so now what you are going to do is that you are going to remove this paper towel and you are going to remove this nitrocellulose paper so now we require this nitrocellulose paper remember the nitrocellulose paper consists of all of these strands which are present in the agarose gel because it has been migrated towards the nitrocellulose paper or else it has attached to this nitrocellulose paper so now you are going to remove this nitrocellulose paper after removing the nitrocellulose paper what you are going to do is that on the other hand you are going to take a plastic bag so this is your plastic bag and in that plastic bag you are going to add the dna probes but remember the probes which are going to add consists of radioactive element so this orange color one which i have drawn are called the radioactive element and this blue color one is nothing but the dna strand or as a probes so the probes consists of this radioactive element and remember the probes has been extracted from the plasmid a right and now what you are going to do so actually what are these probes probes are the complementary sequences of the template strand so here all of the strands now you what you are going to do is that you have added this probes right and in this plastic bag there is a presence of the probes and now you are going to place the nitrocellulose paper which consists of the strands right you are going to place a nitrocellulose paper which consists of the strand because you have extracted uh, sorry you have removed that nitrocellulose paper from the previous stage right and now you are going to place that nitrocellulose paper into this plastic bag and now what you are going to do remember that nitrocellulose paper consists of the dna strands which has been separated by the gel electrophoresis technique and now you have added this probes which consists of this radioactive element so now this dna strands which has been separated in this nitrocellulose paper will act as a template strand so to which it acts as a template strand to the dna probes because they are complementary right so once you add these probes into this Uh, nitrocellulose paper sorry or, or else in this plastic bag then what will happen it moves towards the nitrocellulose paper and it moves towards the dna strands which are present on this nitrocellulose paper and it finds its particular template strand to get binded so here if you see here this is a normal uh, normal strand which has been separated by the gel electrophoresis technique and the below strand indicates the probe which has been added so why it gets binded over here because it is complementary to the template strand right so this is a strand which is complementary to the template strand so that only the reason where this probes will be added and it can recognize or as it can particularly bind to the specific sequence in the same way it occurs only for some of the only for some of the strands why because 
the strands where it has been attached by this DNA probes are related to the plasmid A. Why? Because this pro probes has been also be related to this plasmid A, right? So all of the strands will be will be related to the plasmid A only which has been binded, right? Only which has been binded. So if you see here, let me explain you clearly. So these are the strands which has been separated. Okay. So if you see here in this gel electrophoresis technique, here the strands has been separated. It's it's okay. It's fine. So now you have to find which strands are related to the plasmid A. So if you want to know about it, then what you are going to do? You are going to do the performing of this plastic bag and each and everything. Such that if, if this tree, if these all of the strands which are present in the C well are related to the plasmid A or else uh, the strands which has been separated in the D well are related to the plasmid A. So to know these variations, you have to do this method uh, which is called as adding of this DNA probes. Right. So here, here if you see, we have extracted these probes from the plasmid A. So these probes are related to the plasmid A. I mean A bacteria, A bacteria which has been indicated at the introduction, A bacteria. So the probes are related to the A bacteria. So here I have, what I have said you have to find whether the strands which has been separated in the C well, D well and B well are related to the plasmid A or not. So to find that you are going to add the probes which are related to the plasmid A such that the probes can bind only to the strands which are related to the plasmid A. Right. So here in the C well, I mean this is a uh, strands which has been separated in the C well, right? In the C wells, only two strands will get binded. Only two strands of the probes can be binded to the template strand, where remaining two cannot bind to this template strand. Why? Because these two strands, or else all of the strands are not sub, are not, uh, are not related to the plasmid A. That's only the reason the probes didn't attach it to these strands, right? So now you have understood, I think so. And now what you are going to do? You are going to open this plastic bag. And now you are going to remove this nitrocellulose paper and in the next step you are going to do the process of washing. So in this washing what will happen is that all of the strands which are unbinded to the probes will be removed. And now again you are going to do the washing. So before doing that washing what you are going to do is that you are going to place an x-ray film onto this nitrocellulose paper. So now what will happen is that as you have done washing then all of the strands I mean all of these probe strands will also be removed. All of these probe strands will also be removed and then you are going to place this x-ray film on this nitrocellulose paper and then only the strands, only the particular strands which has been separated by the gel electrophoresis that has been recognized which are related to the plasmid A, right, will be present on the only on this x-ray film. And now this x-ray film which consists of particular strands which has been separated only related to the plasmid A will be placed into an autoradiograph. And once it is placed in the autoradiograph and once you do the process of this autoradiograph then the strands will be assumed in black in color. Right. Now here you can uh, here you can see properly. Now this A as well as the B wells which has been or else the sequences which are present in the A and B are related to each other or else they are similar. But the strands which are present in the C is uh, nearly similar to the strands of A or nearly similar to the plasmid of A. But in the case of D there are no strands which are similar to the A or else B or else C. So this is the uh, final uh, final result which you will get by doing the southern blotting technique. So what I have said you can detect the specific sequence right. So here you can detect the specific sequence which are related to the plasmid A right because you have added the probes which are related to the plasmid A. Don't forget to remember that. So this is the process which you are going to do in the southern blotting. So some of the important points which you have to remember is that so the one of the main thing you have to remember actually here is that you are going to add the probes which are related to the plasmid A. It depends upon your interest. If you want to know about the sequence which are related to the plasmid B then you are going to add the probes which are related to the plasmid B. Or else if you want to know about the genetic information or the specific sequence of the plasmid C then you are going to abstract the probes which are related to the plasmid C or else plasmid D. Okay. So this is the process which you are going to do in this southern blotting technique. Thank you.